The video game genre of astonishing automation, magical management, and complex constructions. Hello, my name's GameZack and welcome to my 30 upcoming PC simulation games for 2020 and 2021 list. Now, this list focuses on more gamey system building and management tycoon games, so not straight up realistic simulators. And remember, city building and space both have entire lists dedicated to them if you're looking for even more upcoming games games. There are also 15 bonus games after the main list in this video, so be sure to watch all the way through. If you appreciate what you see here, please do like, subscribe, and share the video with those who enjoy system building, as it really does keep this channel running and these videos coming off the production line. If you think something's missing, mention it down below. But alright, now let's get started. Kicking things off, it's Hammerting by Warp Zone Studios. Establish a dwarven mining colony as you excavate and explore the mountains of Mara. This is all about the mining operation and you'll be crafting legendary items to help supply the war raging on the surface. Provide what your people need, have your craftspeople master their skills, fight enemies and delve as deep as you can go. It's a nice looking colony sim, obviously inspired by Dwarf Fortress, and has its own take on the idea. The game is also being prepped for modding, allowing you to replace assets and reprogram the game. This looks good and sounds fun, so if you're into some dwarven mining right now, check out Hammerting and we'll see if it can stand on its own when the hammer falls. Moving to the surface, we have Going Medieval by Gramophone Games. Colony sim gameplay set in an alternate history medieval setting, you'll be building a multi-story fortress while fulfilling villager needs and keeping them happy and sane. Going from a wooden hut to a sprawling stone castle, you can optimize production lines as your villagers develop their own personal histories and lives. It's not all peaceful though as you will be attacked, so build defenses and place traps to keep those enemies out. It looks pretty good visually and gameplay wise and it's planning to be an early access for a year when it becomes playable to work out any issues it has. This could be super fun but the risk here is that it can end up being bland if it doesn't have enough character injected into the world and people. It'll also need a lot of depth and complexity which should come with the scale of hut to castle but we'll see how going medieval develops over the next year. Next up, we've got Founder's Fortune by Okashloaf Interact <clears throat> Interactive. Fantasy colony simulation about creative building, colonist psychology, and base defense, where you'll be managing resources, crafting, trading, researching, along with fulfilling the needs and wants of your people. Sounding very much like 3D fantasy Rimworld, you'll be surviving against the environment, rival goblin factions, and yourselves. Visually, it's colorful and cartoony, which is a little rough, but not too bad, really. And I'll be going into early access first with the idea of adding multi-floor structures, pets, relationships, and more factions. Planning for a full release by 2020, you should be able to find your fortune in Founder's Fortune soon. And then we have Winkelche, The Little Shop by Sassy Bot. A charming looking shop management game set in the times of old. Furnish your shop, expand, craft and farm while serving customers through the seasons. Decorating and customization is a big part, so this is looking like a chill experience, though there are some special events to shake things up a bit. Content and depth is usually the concern with games like this, so how much there is on release is important. It's been in early access through 2019 though, with very positive reviews on Steam. So you might want to wait for it to be more developed, but it seems like Winkelche... Okay, I need some help with these names. Winkelche, the little shop, is stocking up nicely. In a similar vein, it's Oi Innkeep by Bad Bandit Games. Cooking, farming, and tavern management in a silly world where based on the trailer, it just all looks like a lot of fun and a bit of insanity. You're the owner of a rundown but magical tavern, so get to cleaning, farming, cooking, and decorating to keep your patrons coming and leaving happy. You can also have people stay in your rooms and you'll be able to get to know them, where you might find some to be a bit more than you'd like to deal with. 
Interestingly, there's a narrative prequel adventure game called Oi Inkeep Chronicles, which isn't something you see every day. Entering early access by early 2019 was the plan, but it might be later 2019 or further. And then going forward to a complete release is always a bit of a grey area with any game, so we'll see if Oi Inkeep is as fun to play as it makes itself out to be once we can actually get our hands on it. And then we've got Yes, Your Grace by Brave at Night. It's time to rule a kingdom, but being a monarch is not all it's cut out to be. This is a kingdom management sim with RPG elements where you'll be listening to petitioners, making decisions, hiring people, preparing for battle, making alliances, and following the stories of the various characters that enter your halls. Some are there to ask for help, but others might want something more than what should be desired which could lead to some very difficult decisions. It's got a pixel art style which does look pretty well developed and the quirkiness and character of the game hopefully shines through too. Because without personality, this could end up being a bit repetitive or bland. The release date is set for early 2020, so you'll soon be able to feel how heavy the crown weighs. To the seas, we have Port Royale 4 by Gaming Minds. Control colonial powers as you try to dominate trade and the seas in an economic business simulation game set in the 17th century Caribbean. Four single player campaigns offer 60 trade ports and obstacles for you to optimize your routes, construct 50 buildings and 18 types of ships to produce and move goods, and there's some tactical turn-based naval combat for when your rivals get a bit too uppity. It's been 8 years since Port Royale 3, so expectations are high, but there's also a lot of room for innovation and changes since it's been so long. It is still by the same development studio though, who have been busy with many other games over the years, so hopes are also not too much is lost from the previous titles. Spying a quarter 3 2020 release, you can plan to set sail in Port Royale 4 then. Now for some dinosaurs, with Parkasaurus by Washbear. Dino Park Tycoon was a dinosaur park management game from 1993. You can actually play that for free in browser at archive.org. Or you can check out this spiritual successor. Build up your park, fill it with dinosaurs, make sanctuaries, match the dino's biome to keep them happy, and wow your visitors as you research, acquire new eggs, deal with escaped dinos, and face other year-round challenges. Visually, it's still surprisingly pretty to look at, which you wouldn't think so because of all the colors and low poly design, but it works. A lot of people have been enjoying this game as it's been going through early access since 2018, and the plan was to open its gates fully in 2019, but it's set for 2020 now. So if you want a modern take on an old dino park idea, then check out Parkasaurus, and hopefully it'll be done according to the new schedule. Shifting from dinos to a lot more, it's Ecosystem by Tom Johnson. It's been a long time since many of us have thought of the evolution civilization game Spore, and maybe it's time to give something like that another go. Grow and modify a diverse world where the creatures will evolve over time by themselves, where you can play for thousands of hours and never see the same thing twice. Movement and behavior develop too, along with it being bound by physics, so it's going to be interesting pushing this to its limits, as you can control things more directly if you want to. There is a demo you can try out right now, and people have been evolving some weird things. And you can go examine Ecosystem right now, and we can see how Natural Selection handles this game over the next year as it heads towards a 2020 release. Alright, and then it's The Universe Sim by Crytivo. I know we, we know about The Universe Sim. It's a god game where you help progress a civilization from the Stone Age to the Space Age by building things and using your god powers. It was pretty much a tech demo until the last couple years, and then it actually started feeling like a game, which is nice. The Kickstarter was in 2014, and it entered early access on Steam in 2018, with a completion date target of 2020. Will they be able to hit that goal? I don't know. But the game did get a lot of improvements over the last couple years, so maybe we can actually get a completed The Universe Sim that's fun to play in 2020, maybe. 
Staying up on other planets, it's Per Aspera by Clune Industries. A narrative-driven game about terraforming Mars. You'll have to explore the planet, gather resources, set up production lines, and make important decisions in this expedition filled with hardship centered around a super-intelligent artificial consciousness in this planetary simulation. It looks kind of cool with the idea and having some narrative doesn't hurt when it comes to progressing through a game, though questions remain on how engaging it will actually be and whether or not replayability will be great. It's the old struggle of realistic simulation versus gameplay too, where if it falls in the middle it might not appeal to either audience. Aiming for a 2020 release, we should get a much better idea of Per Aspera soon. Coming back down to earth, it's Tech Corp by Marden Paul Inc. This game is about trying to become the biggest tech company in the world. Starting in a 90s setting and progressing into modern day, recruit your dream team, develop hardware and software, set up production lines, craft and customize. Entering early access on Steam in 2019 and going through alpha, it's gotten mixed reviews so far, mainly because of the game simply lacking content and just not being very engaging or exciting to play, not to mention bugs, making it a tedious experience experience right now. Hopefully further development improves the game on all fronts, but I have to remind that it doesn't always work out. There are still those who like it though, so if you're interested after this glimpse, then have a closer look and see if you think it's worth getting into Tech Corp. As we're building companies, we have Good Company by Chasing Carrots. A corporate machinery simulator is what this is calling itself. Start your wannabe high-tech company in a garage where you'll need to do everything yourself to become a leader of your staff, researching tech, keeping production chains going, and optimizing logistics to become a global success. Mod support, co-op multiplayer, more customization, and more are planned to be added during early access. Public tests were delayed in 2019, and that probably means the early access release is pushed back too. Plus, it says they're planning for up to a little over a year from the early access release for the game to be complete, so if things go according to plan, which honestly it hasn't so far, we'll maybe see a fully assembled good company by 2021. And then we have a more recent announcement with Golftopia by MinMax Games. Sim Golf is a classic that was pretty universally liked as a collaboration between Sid Meier and Will Wright, creators of Civilization and The Sims, making a golf course design and management game that was pretty good. Many have tried to recreate the formula for modern gaming, but nothing has really surpassed it. But this is one that might have a chance. Design a course, keep visitors happy, deal with weeds, and run a resort that no one wants to leave in a sci-fi futuristic setting. Quarter 1 2020 is when Golftopia is set to tee off, so hopefully it does actually manage to surpass the old classic. Next up, it's Overcrowd a Commutum Up by Square Play Games. A management sim set in a bustling metro station where you'll need to keep things running smoothly and engage your spatial planning skills to ensure the flow of people doesn't get too backed up. Build things, manage staff, provide for commuters' needs, and play the game through a procedural campaign, sandbox, or commute of the day challenge. Visually, it's a little simple, but not that bad, and gameplay looks alright as it's been in early access since mid-2019 with very positive reviews on Steam so far. Running towards a 2020 window for the end of the early access line, if you like what you see but are waiting for a complete experience, you shouldn't have to wait much longer when it comes to overcrowd a commuter map as long as there are no delays. And then we have Kubi Factorium by Mirko Scyther. Build, manage, and grow a thriving colony while discovering new lands with different biomes, exploiting resources, building complex machinery, setting up production chains, and crafting weapons to defeat your enemies. This is a production simulation game with a militaristic element, which might be what's needed for some of you who tend to find these kind of games a little stale. The focus is still on logistics and automation though, and you'll also have to keep your uniquely skilled colonists fulfilled and happy, otherwise efficiency won't be kept up. The somewhat cartoony style might keep some of you away from the game, but overall it's shaping up a lot nicer compared to a year ago. It's in early access now, and the developer states that it shouldn't be any longer than two years to full release, so we can expect Kubi Factorium to finish setting up by 2021. 
Next up, we've got Mashinki by Jan Zeleny. The goal here is to build your own transport imperium on a procedurally generated map. Lay tracks, navigate difficult terrain, invent new vehicles, and be an entrepreneur by competing in the economy, transporting passengers and cargo efficiently. The stylistic visuals are unique, I have to say, but if you're not a fan, there are realistic graphics too, and overall it's pretty nice to look at either way. Having been in early access since 2018, it's received very positive reviews on Steam, so it seems to be going full speed ahead and full release is scheduled for 2020. So if you've been waiting for Mashinki to complete, then you'll be able to get to running those trains not too long from now. Shifting from economy to politics, we've got Rebel Inc. Escalation by Endemic Creations. From the creators of Plague Inc., this time instead of pathogens, the people are the ones that are important here. Balance civilian and military priorities as you deal with deadly insurgencies and attempt to balance war-torn countries. Campaign mode, co-op, and versus multiplayer are styles of play in the works along with custom scenarios, so there should be a lot of content at the end of the day for this one. It entered early access on Steam towards the end of 2019, receiving mostly positive reviews, and they plan for completion in 2020, but they aren't against delaying if more work is needed. So we'll just have to wait and see how Rebel Inc. Escalation organizes itself over the next year and if it can live up to its predecessor's reputation. Staying with politics, it's Democracy 4 by Positech Games. The political simulator is supposed to return with corruption, press freedom, and fake news, intending to include all the features from the previous game including its DLC, while adding more to make it more relevant to today's political climate, this is a game that should satisfy most people looking to dabble in politics. Many have enjoyed the series, though there is criticism that it's not as accurate a representation of politics as it should be. It was supposed to be released in 2019 and entering early access first, but obviously it's been delayed. Honestly, there just isn't all that much information on it. Either they're waiting to make a surprise release date announcement or something's gone wrong with the development of Democracy 4, so I can't say much more and we'll just wait for them to show it off properly, hopefully in 2020. And then we have Mr. Prepper by Rejected Games. Be prepared. The risk of nuclear war is imminent and you have to build a secret bunker for yourself by crafting machines, trading with neighbors, and hiding everything from the secret police to make sure you don't just disappear. Basically, it's a survival colony sim and it looks like things can get pretty complex under your house. Not much was really clear a year ago when we looked at this, but a lot more has been explained and shown off since, though it's still a bit hard to say for sure how captivating the gameplay will be. The original goal was for a late 2019 release, but that depends on how the public beta testing goes, so I'd expect 2020, the year where you can get fully prepared for Mr. Prepper. And now let's take things into space with Starmancer by Ominux Games. Earth is dead, and humans now seek refuge among the stars. Take on the role of a powerful AI as you build bustling spaceports, secret laboratories, and more. You'll also be surviving against starvation, sabotage, and cannibals. But besides crops, you'll also be able to grow more... humans. There's also missions, modding, and consequences to choices. It's a pixel art with some 3D colony management game, which we do have a good number of like this out there, but this one has been drawing some attention and seems to have a lot going for it. If you're intrigued, have a closer look at Starmancer and see if you grow an affinity for it along with those humans. Sticking with space stations, it's Starport Delta by Cloudfire Studios. Space station building and management where you balance resources, maintain the station, and keep residents fulfilled and alive. It's not all smooth sailing either as space will be throwing things your way in a galactic sandbox. Building design and arrangements is important as adjacency bonuses and upgrades will mean you can try to make things efficient and design choices will need to be made, plus a campaign mode is in the works too. At the moment, it looks not bad, though it's a bit hard to say how engaging and long-lasting the gameplay will be. Set for a March 2020 release, it won't be long until you can get to station management in Starport Delta. And then we have Space Base Startopia by Realmforge Studios. 
economic simulation, empire building, and a touch of RTS skirmishes. This is a funny looking game that could be pretty interesting. A 10 mission campaign with purpose specific decks to design and build. You'll be competing with rivals in trade and tourism, trying to attract as much of the galaxy as possible. A little bit of sabotage doesn't hurt either, unless it's on you. Humor and quirkiness are key to this, in a kind of old-school theme hospital dungeon keeper vibe, which is going to be important in keeping us engaged in the universe we're playing in. But without great writing, that kind of humor can get old very quickly, so hopefully it stays fresh. The campaign sounds short too, which could be an issue in terms of how much content there is, but a sandbox mode and multiplayer will also be available. Space-based Startopia is planning on a quarter 3 2020 release, and you can get to building the best station in the galaxy then. Next up is Meeple Station by Vox Games. Build your own space station, trade goods, explore galaxies, and take on daring missions while trying to keep your meeple alive against meteors, pirates, and their own needs. Promising a never-ending adventure where you try to make the best of your ramshackle station, this is a game that many say has a lot of potential, so don't get discouraged by its more simplistic look at first glance. It's been in early access on Steam and started with a pretty positive reception, but it's turned to mixed reviews now, mainly due to bugs, poor execution, crashes, and generally it not being very playable, according to many, especially considering it was meant to release in 2019. It could turn out great, but I'd wait and see if Meeple Station manages to get it together for its new 2020 release window. Alright, last one like this, it's Space Haven by Bugbite. One more space colony management sim where you build a base in space and take care of your people and crew. It's a crowded subgenre for sure, but which do you think is going to be the best one? Here it's said to be a mix of Rimworld and Oxygen not included, combining the procedural storytelling and tile-based gas simulation elements as you escape your burning homeworld and build a haven in space. Your choices here will make you either a hero or a villain. The Kickstarter raised over $260,000 in 2019 and it's getting closer to early access on Steam as it goes through Alpha, which you can buy into on the official site if you really want to check out Space Haven as soon as you can, if you like what you're seeing right now. And then coming down from space but still on another planet, it's Occupy Mars The Game by Pyramid Games. Survive on Mars and colonize it, build a base, upgrade equipment, discover new regions, mine for resources, grow crops, and fix what breaks. This is an open world sandbox that was looking impressive and even more so now that it's got an early access release date, but it's so easy for something like this to become just another run-of-the-mill base builder survival. Initially it was supposed to release in 2018, then 2019, and now they've actually set a 2020 early access date, so it should be playable soon enough. But with the massive misjudgment on timing, this might be one of those projects that goes on for a long time, even though it's only supposed to be an early access for a year. Hopefully there won't be any more delays and gameplay is as exciting as the trailer implies, but we'll get a look at Occupy Mars the game soon and determine whether it actually holds up. Back down to Earth but trying to get into space, it's Simple Rockets 2 by Jundru. Entering early access at the end of 2018 with an original plan to release in 2019, it's looking like it's not quite going to hit its original target. But with very positive reviews on Steam, people are liking it, kind of calling it a simpler and cheaper Kerbal space program, which definitely has its place. Build rockets, planes, rovers, and more along with a planned planet builder and campaign mode that are in the works. Generally, it looks alright and pretty much attempts to deliver on what's being promised. But there is clear competition for this, which is why it's especially relevant to mention Simple Rockets 2 this year because of the next entry on this list, so let's move on. After Simple Rockets, we have to mention Kerbal Space Program 2 by Star Theory. The Kerbals are back. A sequel was probably inevitable, but at the same time you wouldn't be surprised if it never got made. The original KSP is immensely popular after all, with its realistic space program simulation mixed with the quirky adorableness of the Kerbals. 
Promising to build on the foundations of the original, expect improved onboarding, new tech, building colonies, interstellar travel, along with multiplayer and modding. An important note though is that it isn't being developed by the same developers, Squad. Supposedly they needed a bigger team to reach new heights. And they do check in with Squad once in a while. Hopefully Kerbal Space Program 2 will only get better moving upwards, and with the release set for 2020, we'll figure it out soon. And then for some lifestyle with Paralives by Alex Massé. An indie dollhouse life simulation game about living and dying in a nice house you built. Alright, basically this is The Sims but without EA. And that's an interesting prospect. The life aspect will sound familiar. Career, love life, family, friends, and there's an open world where you can focus on the town's well-being too. Building is meant to be more flexible, promising gridless construction, resizable objects, split level floors, custom stairs, and curved walls. It's going to be a challenge trying to compete with the decades popular Sim series, but if Paralives can provide a better gaming experience without going overboard on monetization and DLC, then it could prove to be a great alternative. And for the final main entry, it's Evil Genius 2 World Domination by Rebellion. Satirical spy-fi where you are an evil mastermind aiming to build a lair dungeon complex thing. Construct your base, train minions, and defend your base from the forces of justice. Like Dungeon Keeper, you'll be setting traps and providing sinister tools to your minions to deal with infiltrators while researching new technologies and carrying out missions with hundreds of potential objectives. This all sounds fun for the avid dungeon designer, but as always we should tread a little lightly here as there's always a chance that things might not go according to plan. Spying a 2020 release, it won't be long before you'll be able to design your diabolical home base in Evil Genius 2 World Domination. Alright, now for 15 bonus games, but remember if you made it this far you probably enjoyed your time here, and it would be greatly appreciated if you could like, subscribe, share this video, and ring that bell, as it really does help keep this channel going. Also, if you really like me, you can support more directly by using the Humble Bundle referral link, perusing my gaming merch store where I design my own products, or checking out the Patreon, all linked down below along with the Discord community, Twitch live streams, and social media accounts where I create even more content like drawings, photos, and written articles. Articles. Now for 15 bonus simulation games, starting with a few that entered early access in 2019 and expected to only be in early access for a few months, confident of a 2019 release, and I've listed these before. It's Godhood, Factory Town, and Railroad Corporation. And then for some developments that are taking a long time, there's the Goblins of Elderstone which was meant to be in early access for max 12 months, but it's been two years and it still doesn't have a full release window and then it was picked up by Crytivo, which themselves aren't exactly timely. There's Seelig, that's been in early access since 2017, stating it'll take at least a year to release, but it's been three. Medieval Engineers, it's been in early access since 2015. Automation, early access 2015. Software Inc, early access 2015 and still in alpha. Besiege, early access 2015. The Last Leviathan, early access 2016. Scrap Mechanic, early access 2016. Factorio, early access 2016. And then some that are on the horizon, there's Prehistoric Kingdom, which is still in pre-alpha at the end of 2019 and it's planning an early access phase first, so I wouldn't expect a full release by 2021. There's Voxel Tycoon, which will be in early access for two years and at the end of 2019 it's still not started, so we're looking at a 2022 release at least. And finally there's Satisfactory. Not in the main list, because besides the Epic Store exclusivity, there's absolutely no clear release window, with the devs saying that they don't even know what they're doing tomorrow, so it doesn't exactly inspire confidence for a release date soon. And that's it! 30 plus upcoming simulation games that should be releasing through 2020 and some into 2021 depending on their development. Which ones are you most excited about? Also here's something I'd like to know. What simulation game would you like to be in development? Maybe a remaster or a spiritual successor of an old classic or something you've always dreamed of playing? Let me know in the comments because I'd love to know. Now, if you'd like to see more upcoming games, check out the other lists on the channel sorted by genre shown at the top of the video, like
like City Building and Space for many more upcoming PC games, or my Gamer Encounters series where I take a much more extensive gameplay look at specific games. Alright, that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching, hope you enjoyed it and found it useful, and I'll see you in the next video.